Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Jeff Hogan, Dorn with Professional Ag Marketing, coming to you from the World Pork Expo there in Des Moines. And a mostly lower day, Jeff, except for soybeans and meal. And let's talk about uh, pork first, since you are at the World Pork Expo. Obviously, we've had a little bit of a setback here today, some profit taking after what has been a pretty good recovery off the contract lows, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's a it's a bit of a sell everything type of a day, which um, is a little hard to explain, but no question, you know, everything is is red today. So it's a bit of a risk off, at least from the agriculture markets. Not really seeing anything too tough on any the outside markets. But if you study a, a hog chart, um, it definitely, you know, especially in the nearby stuff, June and July, we we had that dip right after Prop 12 announcement. Um, took a good 10 bucks off this market. Um, we've snuck back pretty much that whole way. Um, and so we're, we're probably, you know, we, we had this huge discount priced in. Market got a little bit more comfortable with where we're sitting on the Prop 12 issue. We're about back to where we started, but still dealing with a lot of the issues that we kind of came into, uh, I would call it, you know, late spring, beginning of summer with as far as, uh, just a little bit softer on the domestic dem demand side here. Yeah. So those things limiting the upside, but with the funds record short here, have they covered a lot of that position or could that give this market a, a little bit of an oomph? Yeah, no, I think they had most of that covered to get to your question there. Um, I think we, the official numbers aren't out until this Friday in the, as of Tuesday, but the way we were looking at it, they pretty well had everything covered up. Um, and should be pretty well in the neutral situation as far as the managed money positions are concerned. So I don't think you'll see um, that as, as a positive factor going forward, unless okay. they can get comfortable enough to <clears throat> start pushing to the long side. Gotcha. I think uh, hogs maybe got a little help from cattle running up into these record all-time highs. And we did that again here today, uh, push cattle initially up into record high territory, all-time highs in the front month. And then we saw some better cash trades of 190 and 300 and set back. So is that just some routine profit taking or what's going on? Yeah, well, I you had a huge rally on the cattle. Um, so I think you got to expect some bit of a reduction in, in futures prices there. You know, we've got this very impressive cash rally going on. Um, at some part point, the market just has to take a break in my mind. Um, and so it's, it's well due. It, it could be healthy, but it's also how these cattle markets die, right, Michelle? It's like they go up, they go up, and we've seen this in the past few years. So I, I think we got to approach this with some caution um, and make sure we don't... Uh, just stick our head in the sand on this market because these, these cattle markets have a way of dying this way. It can't hardly go wrong. And then also one day they start going down, the funds start pushing the sell button and they don't quit, uh, you know, for a good 10, 10, 12 bucks lower, which, you know, today is still wouldn't be a disaster, obviously, but a little different than what we uh, were going home with in the last couple of days, which has been very impressive. Yeah. And as you point out, not only profiting, but it could be a little hedge pressure because these are some really profitable levels that maybe producers don't want to let get away. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Let's talk about the grain trade as well. Corn setting back. Was that just because wheat was down? Was that this change in the weather forecast or what? Yeah, I think it's looking at both of those. You know, the wheat had a couple negative developments. Uh, Russia selling some pretty cheap wheat um, across the pond, I think, makes a difference. Um, you know, dryness over on that front probably is it helping the, the wheat crop maybe more than hurting it. And we're, I think we're pushing just a little bit of moisture, not very confident in it, but a little bit of moisture into the corn belt into late June. And, you know, that's really what this market is extremely focused on is, are we going to have a change in weather pattern late in the year or aren't we? And let me just dive in a little deeper there. I, I think it's worth noticing that you know, this year is extremely um, consistent across the Corn Belt is the way we've been thinking about it. So everybody's in a very similar spot. Got our plan a good crop looks great, um, but on the dry side. So the range with these later June, first part of July um, weather concerns could could end up impacting the yield and are, are huge. 
Yeah, no doubt. And of course, we're going into the WASD, not a lot of expectations. We're going to see major changes or anything like that. But, you know, when you look at um, just a print on the ending stocks on corn above 2 billion bushels, it's just another reminder of a big crop here, isn't it? I would definitely buy into that. Yep. I think that's a big deal. You put it, throw it out in front of you again. I like to think of these weather markets. You know, we, we get all excited. We think about the next 10 day to 14 day forecast. And before you get done with the uh, the week, you forgot about the long-term macro fundamentals. So nothing like a good WASDE report to kind of slap them uh, in front of you again and, and punch you in the gut a bit. I, I absolutely am a believer in that discussion, Michelle. Yeah. And hopefully um, we won't get a whole lot of changes. It seems like USDA may wait until the end of the month with that other big report. So. Um, hog, not hog market, soybean market. Let's go there. Old crop soybeans up pretty strong today. It looked like on the heels of the meal market. Was that where the strength came from or was it spread activity or what? Yeah, I think the meal is probably leading this. I would also just say, you know, soybeans, there's another market that fundamentally is still fairly tight. I mean, I know we've got a lot of things going on in South America as far as the size of that crop and impacting the global S and D on, on beans, but right here at home, you know, we're not swimming in soybeans as this market's been kind of acting like. And and I think the meal market's probably the first one to pick that up a bit, you know, noticing a little bit of demand um, here domestically, but also seeing a little bit of a bump in exports as we watch, you know, where this marketplace wants to move the meal that's coming from the additional crush capacity. And, and you know, we get that job done. Um, I think that old crop once in a while sticks its head up and says, hey, we're not uh, swimming in beans. We're not going to run out either, but let's not take this market to zero just yet type of an attitude. Um, so it's one of those days I think everybody's selling pretty much everything that they can get their hands on. But hey, when old crop beans and meal have to respect the, the real fundamentals here today. Yeah, and you have the forward spreads working as a result of that again, don't you? Those inverses, and that's that's a, that's important also. If you're going to make a market um, find itself a bottom and and put together a decent rally, you got to have the forward spreads working in your favor. No question about it. You bet. All right, one last question for you, Jeff. You're at Pork Expo. How is the attitude there of producers? Because it's been a really tough six to nine months in the business. Yes, uh, very tough market conditions, no doubt. Um, I, it's the fact that we were $10 lower, what was that, two weeks ago, has got us a, a lot of us in a little bit better mood. But you can definitely understand the financial stress that has come into this industry. And, you know, we were in trouble before the California Prop 12. And I apologize for keep going back to that discussion, but it is a big deal. And the timing just was really terrible as far as the financial position. It's got a lot of people on their heels and a lot of people pretty down in the mouth here yet. Uh, the only One of the only good news is it, it keeps threatening to rain on us, but then it, it keeps uh, it just sprinkles a little bit and then quits again. Kind of been the story of our farm uh, pretty much the entire growing season so far. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us there from World Park Expo. Jeff Hogan, with Professional Ag Marketing. That's Markets Now.